I'm going to describe kind of an overview uh, metaphor that's kind of an overview of what this is. And the metaphor is one that you've probably heard before. Rupert Spira uses the, the movie metaphor. Uh, it's a useful metaphor. It's not the truth, but it is a good facsimile or it's a good model or a good map that can be useful, but the map is not the territory. Nonetheless, it can be helpful uh, for people who are interested in the truth and interested in these practices. So the metaphor goes something like this. A parent brings their child to the movies for the first time. And the parent tells the child, you know, I'm going to take you to the movies. And the movies are moving pictures with sound. And so he takes the, the child to the movies, and they're looking at the movie. And then as the movie is playing, the parent says to the child, there's a screen there. Do you see the screen? There's a screen that the movie is playing on. Do you see the screen? And the child says, um, no, I, I don't think so. And he says, well, and the movie that was playing was like a Star Wars movie. So then. He says, well, it's there, there's a screen there. And the child says, oh, is it one of those planets in the background, is that the screen? And the parent says, no, that's not the screen. The screen is nowhere in the um, appearance of the movie, but the screen is there. The child just couldn't, um, couldn't get that, you know. So at some point in this particular movie theater, they had an intermission. And when they had the intermission, they, they turned the movie off and the lights came up and the screen was there. And so the parent said to the child, that's the screen. Now you see the screen. Don't you see the screen? And the child said, yeah, oh yeah, I see the screen. And you see the screen is blank. There's nothing on the screen. And the child says, yeah, that's true. And then the movie started again. And uh, so they're watching the movie and the parent says to the child, um, do you see the screen now? And the child says, yes, I see it now. Right? And uh, and so the metaphor is useful in the sense that you could say in the practice of meditation, we're practicing seeing the screen. You're practicing seeing nothing. You're practicing seeing what's there when there's no activity there, which is the thinking activity. So you're practicing being aware of being and the experience of the state of being is the experience of the state of nothing. It's, it's talked about often as emptiness. <clears throat> So that's the, when we practice meditation, it's practicing seeing the screen. When you're moving attention from the thinking activity uh, to being aware of the body breathing, you're eliminating a lot of the appearance that's being generated by thinking so that here it becomes a lot more possible to recognize the screen, which is the awareness. Uh, and even here, it's not totally pure. It's the awareness of the body breathing, so there's still an appearance of something happening, but it's a lot less than what was happening with the thinking activity. And so it becomes possible during this time away from the generation of the, uh, uh, the personality and the story and you know all of the elaboration that goes on in thinking, it's reduced to something that's a lot simpler and so by reducing it to this, which is a lot simpler consistently over time, it starts to become possible to notice the awareness in which this body breathing is appearing on. And the awareness is empty. There's no, it's no thing. There's nothing there. And it's the emptiness of awareness. And in Zen, the, to, recognize, to recognize the screen, to recognize awareness is called Kensho. And it's considered to be a very important step in the process of awakening and realizing your true nature. To have an opportunity to recognize the screen. And so when the, uh, the, in Zen, when the teacher is interacting with the student and the student sees the screen, when the student sees awareness, is, uh, when the student recognizes awareness, 
uh, and describes that to the teacher, the, then the teacher confirms that the student has experienced Kensho. They've seen the screen. Okay? But now what happens is they, uh, you, you, can't, you can't live there, you know, to experience the purity of awareness, to exper exper experience the purity of, of being is called samadhi. To experience pure being is called samadhi. Nothing's happening there. You know, when you practice meditation consistently, if you do it over time, the probability of experiencing this awareness directly becomes greater and greater until at some point you, there act, there's actually the recognition of awareness, seeing awareness, seeing itself. This is called Kensho, nothing. Yeah. And if you experience this with, degree, with, with purity, if you experience this with purity, uh, then it's called samadhi. And if you experience this with purity, nothing's happening. It's what's described in that one line statement in the Vita Vedanta uh, that says existence, consciousness, bliss. Nothing's happening. There's just existence, consciousness. Right? This is a very pure state of being. Existence, consciousness, bliss. No story, no movie. Nothing. Hmm? There could be fear associated with this because people associate nothing with dying, okay? But that's not a true association. Nothing is actually the freedom, the freedom that's available when nothing is there. It's just free, just space, nothing happening. So what happens is even when a student experiences Kensho, um, we can't live in, in the experience of samadhi, we can't live in the experience of pure being because we're involved in the world, right? So, so you will come back, uh, back to the state uh, in which thinking and the mental process is occurring and the emotions are occurring and so forth and so on. And then what typically happens for a lot of people is they think, oh, I had it and I lost it. I had it and I lost it. But don't forget, the kid that was looking at the screen after the kid saw the screen after the intermission and the movie came back on and the parent said to the child, do you see the screen now? And he said yes, because now he knows that even though he's looking at the movie, the screen is there. Now, in that metaphor, it breaks down because the movie and the screen are really separate in, you know, in reality, right? Uh, but in the truth, Right? The appearance and the awareness are not separate. This is the difficulty that people go through in trying to understand. They're trying to experience the, the pure awareness without the mental state. Right? And you can't maintain that because in order to be in the world, you have to come back into the thinking world, to come back to the thinking reality. Right? And so what we often hear are students complaining or in a, some kind of desperate state, right? In this condition, as the person complaining or being desperate about how they can't get back to the other state, right? But don't forget what the kid saw. He saw when he was looking after he saw the screen and he was looking at the movie, he said, I see the screen. So the completion of the process, right, is that after you've seen the screen, after you've, after you've recognized awareness, um, to, to then come back to the movie and realize that the movie, in terms of this, the actual truth, not the metaphor, right? Uh, the, the movie and the screen are the same thing. So when you're looking at the uh, movie, you're looking at awareness. They're the same thing. Form, awareness takes the form of the appearance. Awareness has taken the form of this appearance, okay? Uh, but the, as it says in the Heart Sutra, that form is empty and that emptiness is form. They're the same thing. So when you get that, when you have that completion, when you have that experience, you're no longer lost because now you know you're always seeing the truth. You're always seeing awareness because awareness is this. This is awareness. Okay? And when you uh, meditate, you know, you can go into samadhi, you can go into a state of samadhi in which uh, this, this is not, the appearance isn't there, it's just empty, right? 
and you experience in this state of samadhi the fulfillment of the possibility of being what you are as the awareness, right? Which is existence, consciousness, bliss. Now this existence, consciousness, bliss is still in existence when the movie's playing. It's still in existence when you're looking at the form, okay? But you've been conditioned to relate to the form as if it's all there is. You've been conditioned to relate to the form as if it's the truth. You've been conditioned to relate to the form as if, not only relate to the form as if it's all there is, but when you relate to the form, your conditioning is the idea that the form is the truth, the form is reality. And in that form, you are a separate self. Right? And because you're a separate self in that form, you are threatened. And so you have a survival program running when you're in that form. Right? But when you wake up and you start to live in an awake state, even when you're in that form, you know that it's an appearance. And so what becomes possible is the possibility of experiencing the freedom and the fulfillment and the bliss and the peace and the satisfaction and the happiness that's available in the pure state, even when the movie's playing. Because when the movie's playing, you know you're still looking at the pure state. You're looking at it in form now. But because of your orientation, because of your conditioning, right? As you're looking at it, even with the understanding, and this is where Advaita Vedanta comes in, you know, you have the understanding that you're looking at, uh, you know, you're looking at the, 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 the pure awareness, even when it's in form, right? That's something you can learn to understand, and that's helpful, okay? But even when that's the case, because of your conditioning, right, you'll keep falling into the programming that came into existence when you thought the form was all there was. You keep getting sucked into the movie, you see? And the reason you keep getting sucked into the movie is because that's a habit, that's your conditioning, right? So it has a pull on you, right? And when the emotions play, that's, that increases the pull on you to identify you know, with that movie that you consider yourself to be in. The other thing that makes it uh, uh, challenging, right, is because in the movie you're there, right? In the movie, you're there. When this movie that we're watching, you're in the movie, aren't you? Right? Over here, you're not in the movie, you see? And so this is why the pull to this is so strong, even though the form and the emptiness are the same thing. And if you practice meditation and you understand what you're doing uh, through a, a, a prolonged period, right, with the idea that you want to strengthen this side of this, you want to strengthen this side of this, so that you're not confused by the movie. So no matter what happens in the movie, you know it's just an appearance. It's not real. It's just the way things are appearing. It's the way the emptiness has taken form. If you can get to that place, then there's nothing that can uh, upset you anymore because you're just looking at a movie. It's the same thing as if you're looking at a movie. This is when people go to the movies, that's what, that's what they're up to. Yeah. They, it, it's interesting because when people go to the movies, they want to look at life, they want to look at life, right, but not be in it so they can enjoy the experience of their humanity, right, because your humanity is the form you're in when you're in the world, and in your humanity as form, right, you experience a lot of intense emotions. When things happen in the movie, you get scared. When things happen in the movie, you get sad and all the rest of it, right? So people actually like to experience their humanity. It's an interesting and exciting experience, but they don't want it to be real, right? So you can go pay and sit in the dark and look at it and know that it's actually not happening to you. It's a perfect it's a perfect uh, 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 replication of the truth. It's the perfect replication of the truth. Except that in, the, in your life, when you get to a point where you're experiencing looking at the, at the uh, awareness when you're looking at the movie, right? this takes practice, right? Because the conditioning keeps coming up, right? And causing you to forget this side of it, right? And when you forget this side of it, everything gets serious. When you forget this side of it, it's not a movie anymore, it's your life, and it's really happening, and you could die in this movie, right? But over here, you can't die. Over here, you can't die. Right? 
So this is the whole process. And the, the thing that makes it challenging is between the times you're sitting in formal meditation and between the times you're contemplating the truth, right? You're back in the traffic of life where everybody you're coming in contact for the most part believes the movie is the truth. So it's gonna really pull you in, you see? It's gonna really, and your emotions are gonna pull you in too because when the fear comes up, you know, the fear is, is, is causing you to experience the idea that you're under threat and something terrible could happen to you. So it takes practice, and it takes practice. And you've got to, uh, if you're actively practicing the practice because you understand what I'm talking about, right? then what you're doing is you're paying attention here when the movie's playing, and when the parts of the movie come, now you may be able through practice to be aware of the fact that this is just a movie, right? but if something intense happens in the movie, right? you may lose it, you may, you may forget yourself and go right back into being the character in the movie and then you're upset and everything goes crazy and everything, you know, and then you go back to your teacher and say, what happened? <laughs> what happened? I thought I understood it. I thought I was awake, you know, and then all of a sudden I was upset. I was, I was, I was terrified. I, I, I felt threatened. I was acting crazy again. Right? And that's simply because you started seeing the movie as if it was real again. And so the practice is the practice of when, you, when that happens, and it's inevitable to happen, you know? It's very unusual for somebody to go from the experience of recognizing awareness and then never seeing the, uh, the, what's happening in the movie as anything other than a movie. This would be a Neckar Tolle type thing, you know what I mean? The whole thing happens, right? And then you just see the movie and that's it. That's unusual, right? For most of us, you recognize your true nature and then you're back in the movie again, right? You're back in the movie again. And if you keep practicing meditation, right? You start to wake up in the movie and see it as a movie, right? But if something intense happens, if somebody dies or you get into a serious accident or you have a big fight with your wife and the lawyers are involved, right? The whole thing might go out the window and you're back in the movie believing the movie's the truth and very upset. I'm very upset. And at that point, you may even turn around and say, oh, all that spiritual shit is bullshit. I don't know how I got involved in any of that. That's crazy. Now I'm dealing with reality the way reality really is. You see how intense it can be? Because all the agreement is about the movie's real. All the agreement is about that the movie's real, right? Most of the people walking around on the planet don't consider what's happening to not be real. They consider it to be really what's happening. And so they're behaving consistent with the idea that it's really what's happening. Right? So I'm explaining it this way to you because this explanation is, is good because the explanation is an Advaita Vedanta explanation, meaning that the cure for the ignorance is knowledge, right? So that's the description and the metaphor, right? And yet the practice that allows you to see the screen, right, is also very powerful because when you see the screen, it's a direct experience. You have a direct experience and so you don't question that. It's obvious and evident that that's the case when you see it for sure, when you see it for real, right? If you put the two together, if you put the two together, it can be very powerful because now if you get lost and believe it's a movie, right, you've developed an understanding and the knowledge about that to not get stuck. Gabish? Well, it's a combination. You're watching, when, for most human beings, you're watching the, the agreed upon movie, right? And then you're watching your individual version of the movie at the same time. Right? So we agree that this is a room, right? but the way you're experiencing the room is unique to you. You may not, may not like this room, right? Somebody may like this room, you may not like this room. So you have that. So it, it, the, comp, the complexity of the appearance it gives it even more hypnotic power, you know? That so much, that, you know, the rest of the world believes that this is reality, that this is the truth, that this is actually happening. You know, that's, that's hard to argue with, right? Because you can be dealing with scholars and philosophers that, you know, that say you're crazy if you believe anything other than the obvious, which is this is reality. Right? So it's not the kind of thing you can argue in a debate, right? But it is the kind of thing that if you get it, if, if it makes sense to you, if you hear the truth, right, and it rings a bell, and the reason it rings a bell is because you're experiencing this truth all the time. You know, that's what's ringing a bell. That's what's making this make sense, is this is going on all the time. These explanations just allow you to start making sense of what's going on all the time. 
It's a way, it's a way, of, uh, it's a way of holding it. Because you see, when you're in the experience of the awareness itself, the context of this is love. The context of this is unconditional love. And when that begins to be apparent in the movie, right? Now, the way you're being in the movie is coming from the context of unconditional love, right? So, so you're left to be happy, peaceful, satisfied, and you're left to be kind, compassionate, and considerate of other people who are stuck in the movie, right? Like that. Yeah. It's a process. It's a process, you know? And if you don't, if you don't experience the, the blessing that Eckhart Tolle experienced, for you it's gonna be a gradual process, meaning that there's gonna be a period of time when you've got one foot here and one foot here. Right? Do you remember, remember what I said, the orientation of a person is, is very dominant when you start this. That's hypnotic when you start this, right? So you gotta go through confusion for a while, right? That's why it's important to have a community and a teacher. So when you, when you go through these crazy experiences, you have somebody say, just, re, just practice, settle down, relax, calm down, let your mind calm down, relax, everything is fine, there's nothing wrong. You need that reassurance. Yeah, you have to have somebody to, to tell you you're okay when you feel crazy.